Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with, guess what, more old world content. I know I've been saying that a lot lately and I have absolutely no apologies for it. I'm still so very excited for the old world and I cannot stop making content for it. I'm literally obsessed. And that obsession was added to this week when I stumbled across an Instagram post from the Tabletop Tactics boys showing off a beautifully painted green knight that was done by their in-house painter, Mr. Fletcher. I quickly uh, messaged him privately and asked him how in the blue hell did he do it and was he planning on making a video on it? He said no, he had to rush through the process to get it done for some future videos, um, but he did uh, share the recipe with me. Now, a caveat to that, he is a 10 times better painter than I am. I'm trying to emulate something that is frankly, far above what I can do. So I'm gonna do like a dumbed down version of that, trying to emulate and trying to get as close to that kind of result as I can, using a little bit kind of simpler techniques, a little bit less paint. But let's hope I can pull off this crazy thing. If you wanna check out Fletcher's one yourself, obviously I'll link his Instagram below. You can check out that, it's his most latest post, unless he's posted something between now and then. But what I checked earlier today was his latest post, and you can check out the beautiful green knight that he did there. Before I get to the video, I just wanna say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. You guys are amazing. Without you guys, I could not continue doing what I am doing. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. If you're interested in getting involved with that, there's links in the description below access to a private Discord server and an extra video every single week are just two of the awesome benefits of being involved. So, never been a better time. Okay, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get my old Green Knight looking good. Okay guys, so here is the Green Knight in his original box. The box is a little bashed, but I don't think I'll ever throw out this box. It's very iconic to me. And as you can see, it does have a completed Green Knight in it, but that is not the one we are gonna be working on in today's video. I am not willing to give up the monstrosity that is my original childhood Green Knight. I dropped him in some isopropyl alcohol, I think two days ago, and I've let him set, sit and stew in there ever since. I'm going to try and break him apart, clean him up, and return him to, I was going to say former glory, but I never had him in a glorious state, so I'm now going to try and bring him up to a glorious state. So as you see, isopropyl alcohol and a couple of days with metal miniatures works wonders for cleaning all of it off. It even disintegrated most of the super glue. The min miniature, for the most part, broke apart, which is exactly what I wanted to because I wanted to fill all the gaps properly, remove any old flash, or any of that kind of crap that I really did not want to deal with. So as you see, it does work a treat. After we have gotten all the parts cleaned up, it is time to, of course, reassemble the piece. So I'm gonna be using thick gel super glue, which is my, of course, go-to these days for assembling metal and resin miniatures. It gives a very fantastic hold fairly quickly. So I lined up the horse as better as possible, but of course, with a bit of mold slipping, it wasn't perfect. So I used a knife and some files to clean it up and make sure that both paths of the horse were lined up as best I could. I then filled in any gaps or anything like that with some UV curing resin. All you do is put it into the gaps and then cure it with the, the green stuff world torch works a treat i built a nice custom base for him. I wanted this guy to stand out in the battlefield like i've been doing with kind of all my heroes so i'm going to be adding some of this cork this is just coasters from like teapot coasters from ikea that i break up and it works a treat because this green knight character i feel like he should have gone on at least a pegasus size base a 60 by 30 or something like that now he's on a 60 by 30, but a, a 50 by 60 or something. You know, the, the double size Pegasus ones. Just to make him stand out as a character in the battlefield, he can't join units or anything like that, so it's not going to disrupt him in any, in any way. It would just make him stand out a little bit more. But because he's on a standard cavalry base, I really did want to add something. So, like I said, I built him up on two layers of cork. Marked off where his tabs are going to go, cut those out, got him glued on and then started gluing on the rest of the components. Now there's something very interesting about the Green Knight. He does come with these beautiful banner poles. And previously, as in back in the day, even before the red box that I showed you at the start of this one, the one where he came in originally with polystyrene boxing, he came with paper banner stickers that you would wrap around these banner poles um, and basically give him his banners. They don't do that anymore, so they just give you these blank banner poles. So I basically spent days considering 3d printing looking for files trying to get the right thing for some banners from at the end of the day i was literally about to give up when uh, of course the glorious laura stepped in and said have you tried checking your uh, cities of sigmar bits no i had not considered that and after about four seconds of looking at cities of sigmar bits i found the box of fusiliers and find the absolute perfect selection of three banners to go on top of the flagpoles so uh, that was a very big save from her 
It saved me a lot of headache and gave me what I consider to be the most magnificent banners that a Green Knight has ever had on them. They fit absolutely perfectly and I am going with the aesthetic of them blowing forwards, like almost like framing the miniature. I've seen people put the paper banners on and they're all obviously facing backwards as if he's galloping along and stuff like that. I prefer them, like I said, to be framing him. So I'm going to put all these banners facing forward, obviously the same direction. They're all building the wind in cool ways. Awesome. They're a bit of a pain to paint later on, as I found out, but I was very glad to uh, have them assembled, attached, and uh, yeah, they were, they were just perfect. So what I normally do with stuff like this is I take a blob of super glue and I pour it onto a palette, and then I dip the part I want to use into the super glue, and then attach it to the flagpole. As opposed to putting glue on either end of the part and having a big blob of super glue running down either part, that's not what I want. So, like I said, squirt a bit of super glue onto a palette, dip the part into that very slightly, and then stick it onto the piece. The less super glue you have, the actually the stronger the bond you're gonna have between the two parts. Like thick globs of super glue are not strong. And here are the glorious banners attached. I absolutely love the aesthetic. I think they work perfectly. And then it was on to spraying. So I sprayed the miniature black. And then as I was following, following Fletcher's guide, I got a pure white kind of heavy zenithal from the top and sprayed that. And this is where I started down the road of using his particular tutorial. This is the one that I saw online that absolutely inspired me. Like I said, this is on the Tabletop Tactics. Uh, Beard posted this. It's actually his original Green Knight that Fletcher repainted. So if you want to check out that, check out all their socials, whether it be Instagram or their awesome YouTube channel for battle reports. They're obviously getting into the old world these days, hence these models being painted up. It's awesome to see. So step one was uh, mixing Warp Lightning and Dark Angels Green 50-50. Now normally I do not mix anything on this channel because I don't want to have anything be more complicated than it needs to be. But as I was following the Glorious Fletcher's advice, I followed through, I did 50-50, and it did give me a beautiful and perfect base coat for doing a dark angel green uh, style knight. I don't know I said dark angel green knight, I just meant to say the green knight, but painting with dark angels green, so my mind kind of ran. Obviously this miniature is very old. And all of the kind of design and barring that runs down the side of him is kind of mashed and kind of soft and it's kind of a bit wishy-washy. Anyone who tried to do a really nice clean looking set of barding on this model is going to be in for a real headache. I can only imagine what the kind of, if they ever manage to come back to and redo this miniature, how stunning it's going to be. Not that I think this one isn't stunning. I think it absolutely is. It's definitely one of my favorite and it's a very iconic miniature and I am very happy to be painting it up. But uh, it's definitely kind of make up the detail as you paint along kind of jobby. But that's okay. That's okay. That gives us a lot of time to practice. And uh, the result is more your own as opposed to the detail in the miniature. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, that's up to you. So one of the clever things I think that I did whilst painting it up is obviously I was base coating in the banner. And I decided to just paint around the banner pole as if the fabric was wrapped around it. There is obviously, I didn't sculpt any extra fabric coming off the back of the banner. It is literally a flat piece onto the banner pole, which is going to look a little bit weird. It doesn't seem like there's any of it attaching. So I used a bit of camera trickery and I, I like painted in fabric wrapped around the pole and I think it works great. After that, we're going to throw on the rest of the kind of base coats of this miniature. So we're going to use black Templar contrast and that's for the beautiful horse. There is not a lot of the horse showing on this particular miniature. It is covered up by all of his armor and his innate barding and his filigree and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, contrast Black Templar, cover the horse. Make sure it doesn't pool anywhere you don't want it to. And be careful not to hit any of the green with the black. That's not what we're gonna try and do. And when you're working underneath his belly, make sure you don't hit his saddle. And there's obviously a big strap going under his belly holding a saddle on. You don't need any black on that either. Out the brown's not gonna show up. Don't ask me how I learned that. From here, we're going to go over to Gargak Sewer and we're going to apply this to all of the reins and straps and stuff for his stirrups and any other bits like that. There isn't a lot of those bits on the model, so it won't take too long to do this stage. Like I said, his stirrups and then the bit going around the horse's face. Which I always forget it's not the reins, it's the tack or whatever. I don't know. I'm not a horse guy. But it's just a very quick and easy step. Like I said, before I go on to like that kind of heavy layering stages of the green, I do like to have some framework for the whole model. And that's why I love getting all the base coats on. 
I don't know how those people do it, the really, really good painters who are just like, I'm gonna paint this shoulder pad first and they paint that to absolute completion and the rest of the miniature is still just like sprayed black. I, you guys are crazy. I just cannot work that way. Now it's onto some lead belcher to base coat in all of the metallic parts of this miniature. So obviously he's wearing quite a lot of armor. It is a lot covered by his, uh, his tunic, but his legs are still sticking out. The uh, barding on the horse is obviously going to get silver and uh, the blade of his sword. Once again, quick and easy step. Looking good. Feeling happy, I'm okay with this. We're gonna get some Retributor Armor Gold and we're just gonna do the very small amount of gold detail that's on this guy. So obviously his sword, hilt and pommel, cross guard are all gold. Even the handle of this sword appears to be gold in all the images that I've seen. So I'm gonna run with that. And then obviously the tops of all the banners are going to be done in gold as well. All those beautiful fleur-de-lis. After this, I wanted to get working on the base. I was under a bit of a time constraint today, so I kind of need to get the basic material on to give it as much time to dry as possible as I was working on the model. So the first thing I did is got some Basilicanum Grey Contrast and applied that to all the rocky outcrops. Normally I don't go into detail about what I do with bases in my videos, but some people have been asking what I do, so I decided to put it in this one. So you have Basilicanum Grey all over the rock, and then I grabbed the Dark Earth from AK Interactive. This is my favorite ground texture paste for like, I'm pretty much doing all my old world miniatures based like this. And I basically put that on the, uh, the base, and then I use it to blend in the rocks as well. So I'm gonna go up over the top. It's not just gonna be, you know, brown around the bottom, and then a big gray rock, gleaming rock coming up out of nowhere. That's not quite my style when it comes to basing. You'll see that here, I go into all the ledges, all along the top, which is of course where more soil would um, reside. Basing is one of my, I, I almost consider it to be a separate hobby. I love basing stuff so much. I love having a play around with different grass tufts and textures and stuff. I really do need to get in and try some of those pigments on bases. You see in all the Squidmore videos, I think that'll be a lot of fun. So here's the base as it currently stands. And I'm gonna go for Nullin Oil and shade down everything that isn't green on the model. So all the armor, all the gold, the banner poles, the barding on the horse, all those bits and pieces are gonna get done uh, with a quick Nullin Oil shade. Okay, and with that shade dry, it's time to move on to actually layering and putting the work in for the green. So we're gonna start with Warp Stone Glow. So the way it works is it's Warp Stone Glow, then it's up to Moot Green, and then it's AK Interactive's Pistachio Green which is a paint I bought specifically for this video and for this job. It comes highly recommended from Fletcher. So I'm definitely going to lean into it a lot when it comes to painting this miniature. So this is the part of the paint job where you do need to take your time and you just need to carefully layer up the model. I know you can get to certain parts and your brush can kind of start to rush ahead as you've kind of done all the interesting parts. And that has happened to me a couple of times. I did not enjoy layering up the rump of this horse that big bit of fabric over its backside was a pain in the backside. And it did actually end up darkening it down with green and trying to relayer it again because I failed so many bloody times. Whereas it comes to the details like the barding across the face and stuff, I nail that every single time. The banners and me weren't the best of friends either, but we managed to muddle our way through and get them done. I don't know whether you guys are gonna follow along with uh, using these banners. Obviously it's by a box of fusiliers to get them. Yeah, but I definitely think they they add a lot to the green light. So I'm going to go through the same process of layering those. And with the first layer of green done across the entire piece, it's now time to move over to Moot Green. And basically every stage I'm going to do is exactly the same as the previous stage, just pulled back a bit, a little bit less. You're just highlighting a little bit higher, a little bit brighter. The Moot Green is another like natural, it's quite a big jump up from the, uh, the previous green that we used and you can be a little bit kind of nervous making big jumps in contrast like this, but I feel like it does add so much to the scheme. It adds so much to the model. I just love it. I mean, it's that whole paint bravely thing. And I'm, I'm slowly but surely learning that you want to jump up in quite bright colors for like your final highlights of things. It really does work out. I think you get much more vibrant, much more beautiful miniatures on the table. Instead of these kind of dark and drab ones that I can be sometimes fielding as i generally don't paint bravely i paint safely maybe a little bit mediocrity if you know what i mean as you see playing around his barding got a really fine point of brush i'm taking my time 
and getting those parts painted. And it is only when you get to that barding around the side of the horse that you do have to take your time. You're going around each and every one of those designs, a little bit in the middle, next to each and every design, down the middle. It is quite a lot. It takes a lot of time. When it comes to the kind of fluffy bit on top of his head or the bit on top of the horse's head, if I'm being brutally honest, I remove 99% of the paint from the brush and I kind of dry brush it over it. Because this model is so old and like I said, a lot of its details are quite soft and rounded, it's hard to go in and just layer each individual kind of, I think they're supposed to be feathers or whatever on the tops of those. It's just, it's just It just gives you a headache because they don't end up like in a row or smooth or whatever. So I find the best thing to do is to just give them a little light dry brush. It catches all the details that you want them to catch and finishes it off nicely. Before I go on to this beautiful pistachio green, at this stage I didn't know it was beautiful, I was very scared to it. I decided to finish off the base apart from tufts, we'll do tufts at the end. So riser rust was then used to add a little bit of warmth into the soil and the earth, and I used that dry brush that across the entire base of the miniature. Over the rocks and everything. You've never once seen a clean rock in a dirty field, okay? The rocks are supposed to be dirty too. Screaming Skull was then brought in and dry brushed even lighter again across all of the base just to once again add a little bit of brightness into it. It's a very simple step, it's something I've been doing for years, but uh, I think it adds something, I think it works. Obviously kind of mutes it down a bit, it doesn't detract your eye away from the miniature to go to the base. I do love that I added height to this thing, I think it will definitely stand out on the tabletop, especially with those banners. And then of course, some black rim uh, to clean up the edges. Obviously I'm using MDF bases. I have a laser cutter, so I've been laser cutting out all the bases and trays that I need for the old world. It has been a godsend having that machine for this. I've never been more grateful. Okay, time to move on to AK Pistachio Green. I don't think I've ever actually used a, an AK paint before. I do have a couple of them uh, here in the studio that I've never tried yet. So first one I'm ever using is Pistachio Green. And as you can see, I'm going much lighter. Like I said, same steps again, just pulled back. And that's what I'm doing with the pistachio green. And as soon as I start putting those first coats on, I am in love. It's doing exactly what I wanted to do. Pumping that color up. And just making it like a wow piece. You know, your eye scans across a Bretonian army. Think about that, a Bretonian army. If your characters are going to stand out from a Bretonian army, especially if you're on the same size base, if not smaller than a lot of the characters, you're going to have to give the model a bit of oomph. I definitely think bringing it up bright and vibrant with this is definitely the, the way to go. And obviously you can paint your Green Knight however you want, even though I think it would be sacrilege to paint him any other way than the Green Knight. This is what I was talking about earlier. Those kind of designs that go along the skirts of the barding are just all wonky and all off and all awful. It's so hard to paint them. So you just gotta take your time and just get it right. This is me actually coming on after I've re-greened, re-dark greened the romp after my first failed attempt at using the pistachio green on it. So if it takes you a couple of tries too, that's okay. We can't all be the gods. That is of course, Mr. Fletcher, but we can try. Practice, practice, practice. I did absolutely fall in love with this uh, green stages on this thing and I started to wonder if I could incorporate it anywhere else inside the army. Maybe my grey knights are dedicated to the green knight and they're all painted in this vibrant green colour scheme. Is that a good idea or a terrible idea? I'm really not sure. Part of me thinks it might be a really good idea. You guys can let me know in the comments below. I haven't picked a Grail Knight color scheme. I'm doing all my units of Bretonian Knights in the same color scheme. I don't mean every unit is the same. I mean every knight inside of a unit is the same and every unit is different from each other. I'm bringing five Grail Knights um, with a damsel, so six Grail Knights basically in a unit to a tournament on the 10th of February in uh, Underworld Gaming here in Dublin. And those are obviously going to be the last unit that I paint up. I want to give them as much love as possible. I'm starting to think this green across them might look really, really good. It was then time to layer up all the metallic, so I grabbed some lead belcher for all the flat areas. You may notice I went a little bit overboard on the banner here, and I did consult with some friends. We had a sit down on Discord, talked about it a little bit, and they all decided that the banner was awful and it was time to fix it. So I kind of went away on camera and I think I put some croak. I, I First, I darkened it down a bit, and then I used some croak shade from a uh, croak shade. Croak green shade, sorry. 
over the top of it and then i re-layered it with like moot green and stuff just to, to bring it to a more in fact i did 50 50 warp moot green and warp stone glow to once again pull the banner back you will just see a magical transformation from this gaudy yellowy looking banners to completed i think semi clean looking nice banners uh, as you can see, I then jumped up to Iron Breaker for the brighter silver and did all the edges and sharp edges, all the filigree across the armor panels in that just to make them stand out a little bit more. Time for some Corvus Black, which of course we're going to use to highlight up and layer up the horse. I feel like the Green Knight's horse is really just forgotten because there's so much other detail and he's a black horse. So he just gets blended in. He just looks like the kind of the shadow underneath all the awesome detail. It's a bit of a shame. I wonder does a green oil knight have a, a name for his horse? If he has one, I certainly don't know it. If you guys know it, let me know in the comments below. I would like to know. But we use obviously the Corvus Black on as much of the body as we can. And then the, the nose of the horse and his tail got redone in Corvus Black as well. A bit of Katachan flesh, which is a nice warm brown. We're going to use that to layer up all the barding. And of course the saddle as well and try to get in and amongst and around the knight himself to uh, get that saddle painted up. And then, uh, as you can see, this is where I've thrown the croak green shade on, but I haven't layered the banners again yet, so bear with me. You'll see another magic transformation at the end. Here's me, and I'm going to stick a bunch of... Uh, just loads of tufts onto the miniature's base. Obviously, he is considered to jump out of wild areas, like crops of trees and hills and stuff, all the time. That's how he does. He disappears every turn and comes out of a new scenery piece and fights. He's awesome. So obviously getting his blade nice and silver. And then I threw Warpstone Glow across the blade because he is considered to have basically a lightsaber. A glowing green blade is seen in his hands as he appears out of the gloom and fights. So I went ahead and did that. Here's where you can see the banners are once again tamed. Looking like a nice green and to uh, give you some guys a grand reveal, I've taken a bunch of nice images of my finished green knight in a nice setting, nice dark setting. I think he looks awesome. I'm once again super proud of this. I hope you guys have some green knights in your collection. That was kind of hard to come by these days. Hopefully you'll come back in a made to order from Games Workshop soon and everybody can get their hands on one if they so wish and get them painted up and in their Bretonian collections. Well, I now have a completed Green Knight ready for my Bretonian army. This is the original Green Knight that I bought 20 years ago. I remember cracking open the box, uh, sliding out that uh, a little plastic container and flicking it open and looking at the barding on the side and saying to myself, those swirls are painted on? And uh, I was a bit disheartened from that moment on. I did end up throwing a bit of paint on them, as you saw at the beginning of this video that I removed but I was never happy with them but I, I can say firmly now that I'm super pleased with the result that I did achieve like I said at the beginning Fletcher did a much better job than me and if you want in his latest Instagram post he does go through the details of how he painted his one the extra steps he took and if you want to go that extra mile so make sure you do check out that post linked down below hope you guys enjoyed the result if you did make sure you give the video a like ask me any questions you want in the comments below whether it be about the Green Knight Bertonians Old World 40 KH Sigma Lord of the Rings whatever I will answer every single one of your questions and help you to the best of my ability and if you're not already subscribed to the channel there has never been a better time to to hit that subscribe button because in 2024 I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers and to incentivize people to jump on board I'm going to be doing a Titan giveaway this year so at the end of 2024 I will be giving away a Titan it is dependent on how many subscribers I get so if I get to 65,000 subscribers I will give away a Warhound if I get to 85,000 subscribers I'll give away a Reaver and if I get to the 100,000 mark I will give away a Warlord Titan all you have to do to be involved is subscribe all right guys thanks for sticking around to the end I'll see you in the next video.